Hi, this is Rodney Payton, and I'm the guy who conceived, designed, and developed the system known globally as the Payton Method for the teaching of complex surgical procedures. Now, I'm an international author, speaker, and keynote speaker around the world, as well as being a coach and an educator. And when I was last in the United States, and on stage, somebody got up and asked me, look, where did this come from? When and how did you decide and develop this technique? Well, for me, it goes back a long way. When I was training in the 70s, we were apprentices. And we had a book, a particular book, this one, by the way, called Farkasen. Farkasen's textbook of operative surgery. And that book contained something like 800 pages of all you ever need to know about surgery. What I had to do is learn what was in this book, show it to my consultants and trainers, and eventually they put a stamp on my head and said, there you are, you're a consultant. But very early on, I knew this wasn't enough. Because something happened to me one day in the operating room. My boss turned to me and said, Rodney, have you ever done what is called a retrograde pilogram? That's a look at the outflow of the kidney. And I'd seen him do it. And he said to me, well, if you haven't done it, you'll never learn younger. Away you go. So I went into the operating room. And the first thing that happened to me was the kit that I was going to use was handed to me in bits. And I didn't know how to put them properly together. So it was actually the theatre nurse who said to me, look, put the zero to the zero and turn it 90 degrees and then lock it. And you've got it. And I thought, that's great. I've got it. And I'd seen how the boss inserted it and had a look. And I looked down and sure enough, I could see the little ureters coming into the back of the bladder. So I said then, OK, I've got it. So give me a catheter. And the theatre nurse said to me, yeah, what size do you want? And I went, um, I'll have whatever he uses. So he said, oh, a size four. I said, that'll do great. So I got the size four and I looked down and sure I got it in and I started putting it in. And she said, stop. I said, what? She said, you haven't taken out the wire. I said, oh, right. And she pulled out the wire and I set this little flexible catheter in. You know, it taught me a very valuable lesson. The lesson is that you can come from a textbook like this and you can see what has to be done in a cold textbook like fashion but you don't actually know the detail. Those little bits that everybody uses to get an operation done, but you weren't precisely sure. And so you couldn't have the confidence. So what I did right from the very beginning was I started to write down, and you'll see here some of it, I wrote down beside my textbook all the little procedures that my consultants taught me. Little tricks, what angles to use. For instance, that was uh, putting in a femur. What size of screw to use, how to over drill. And I would write it down and that book became my Bible for my whole way through, whether in military life or in civilian life. So what was happening was we were getting an overview of what was happening, but didn't know the absolute detail. So I started thinking to myself, well, look, the whole thing about learning a skill is not that these hands work. I'm a good surgeon. I'm a great surgeon. And these hands work, providing this tells the hands what to do. If that is mixed up, then what my hands come out with is also mixed up. So learning a skill is all about the cognitive thing. It's all about, it's like your body is a computer. If you imagine it's a computer, and it depends what software you put in, what comes out. Remember, rubbish in rubbish out. And so I learned very early that to learn a skill in surgery was all about learning it cognitively or mentally first before putting these things into action. And so it did two things. One is for me. I knew that if I could get my consultants, if I could get that teaching in before I was doing something on my own, I would feel confident about what I was doing. And much more importantly, patients would be safe. I knew what I was doing. My patient would be safe. As soon as I started to do an operation and I wasn't quite sure of all the technical detail, where to put the scissors, how to turn them, then there was a problem with the safety of my patient. And that, for all of us, has been fundamental. So through the 70s, as I developed, 
I developed the beginnings of this system. And let's move forward a little bit from that. Let's move forward to the 80s. I had been teaching a lot, and then there was a big revolution in surgery, and that revolution was called laparoscopic or keyhole surgery, where we look in through little holes into the abdomen as opposed to making what we would be used to as a good surgical cut. The problem is that all my consultants, myself, have been trained as apprentices. Then we went to a conference. And we saw on the screen, we saw, this is how to do this operation. Well, guess what? That was the same as that operative textbook. We saw a sterilized version of what was going to happen. And unfortunately, a lot of consultants went back to their operating rooms, got the equipment, and started trying to undertake this procedure. And it went badly wrong. So at that stage, I was working for the Royal College of Surgeons in London. And the president asked me, he said, look, we've got to do something about this. We've got to fast, effectively and efficiently help surgeons to learn new techniques very, very quickly so that they can be safe operating on people. So what I want you to do, Rodney, is I want you to design and develop some form of training system to help them learn. And that came out with the Training and Trainers program, something I wrote Ooh, 8990, somewhere around there, and is now used throughout the world from the United States, the UK, throughout Europe, in Russia, and in Australia as well as the Far East. That was revolutionary at the time, and one of the first books that came out was this one, which was the Training the Trainers program from the Royal College of Surgeons. So that was produced in the early 90s to help people overcome this way of learning surgery because if you happen to be an experienced surgeon and you have your own practice, especially a country where that practice is private, how are you going to stop what you're doing to go and learn a new procedure? And if you're going to do that, how do you learn it fast, effective and very, very quickly? Because if you don't, you're going to lose out. Yet you've got to keep up to date. So we designed and put together what is now known as the patient four-step four method for teaching complex surgical procedures. We use it to learn the individual steps, but also to put it together so as we can teach major surgical procedures. And of course, it's not only in surgery these happen, but also in medicine, and in particular, interventional radiology. So that, in 1998, ended up with me producing this book, which has been quoted in, if you look on Google, you'll see it worldwide, has been quoted as where the first time that this was published on a worldwide basis. In my book, Teaching and Learning in Medical Education. And on the basis of that, I have been teaching around the world the Training the Trainers programs, and I know some of you watching this will have been taught by me in many countries of the world. And so what that did is it set people free. It set free the trainee. Because the trainee was being given the confidence that when their boss was saying, look, I'll stand with you, but you can do this, they knew that they had in their mind the way to carry out this procedure. It also helped the trainer. Because the trainer then knew when to let a trainee loose on a particular operation when the trainer could confidently hand over to a trainee, had to still stay there in a supervisory role, but at least they knew when they could hand it over. So this went round the world, and a lot of academic papers then came out, and some of these I've just taken off, the Peyton four-step procedure. You can look on, on Google and you can see it all over the place, how that training program designed and developed has now spread worldwide. So the program was developed, it was practical in my mind as I did it, and then over the years a lot of research has been done in a number of countries which show that up to 30% savings of time in teaching and training occurs if you follow the method. And that method is good for the consultant who's teaching and also for training who's learning who can demand of their consultant that they follow a particular path and procedure. 
So that's where it all came from. What I'm saying today, therefore, is thank you for those people who have followed and, and done me the honour of doing the research into that. For others, as you know, I speak around the world globally, that I am available for you if you need some help in how you teach these complex procedures. Remember, it's about the patient. And remember, it's also about your confidence and your competence in what you do. So, thank you for listening. And if you want to get hold of me, the numbers to get hold of me are going to be put up at the end of this video. Thank you so much.